Full Twin Audios. Stories created solely with the vintage soul in mind. O-T-R-T-S-T-A. What story can I connect you with today? I don't really need a story. I just wanted information. Very well. Tune your radio dial to anchor.fm slash soul twin audios. That's S-O-L-E. Soul Twin Talk, a backstage pass into productions at Soul Twin Audios through guest interviews, commentaries, promos, and featuring your teasers and trailers. Soul Twin Audios presents a very special recreation. I guess this is one holiday we won't forget. Well, that's that. Uh, Mind if I turn on some lights? No, not yet. It's time you pulled yourself together, isn't it, Tom? They'll be here in a few minutes. Do you realize what we've done, Brandon? I know exactly what we've done. And done well, if I may say so. I hope so. Of course, using this rope was an absolute stroke of genius. Much neater that way. Stainless, no telltale mementos. (laughs) We're not through yet. Don't forget that. Suspense's lost episode, Rope. Rope is now available at the Mutual Audio Network. Go to www.mutualaudionetwork.com. Welcome back to another episode of Soul Twin Talk. So what have I been up to this week? I have been promoting the heck out of the programs. I have created a bunch of little mini trailers and I added those to YouTube. And I also created a new trailer with music by Ross Bernhardt for my upcoming newest series, Dark Paradise. Now, I'm sure you're all sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, Rachel, you've got another series going on. Don't you have like five other series that you're working on? Yeah, uh, I like to stay busy. It's that whole ADD thing. ADD plus insomnia equals productivity. You know how that goes. Well, some of you might know how that goes. But anyway, so my Dark Paradise series, I recently put out a poll on Twitter asking folks what they wanted to hear, what podcast I should do, Dark Shadows or Strange Paradise, which nobody cares about, nobody talks about. And a couple of people suggested to me that I combine the two. And I'm thinking, you know what? I think I will do that because I've had ideas to do that in the past. So dark paradise it is. And basically with that little talk discussion podcast series, I'm going to be talking about dark shadows. I'm going to be talking about strange paradise. I'll have interviews. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the second interview will be somebody I'll bring on. I haven't decided who yet. Uh, So I have interviews, reviews, and also fan fiction, if I can swing that. I keep having ideas for fan fiction, so most likely I will write some fan fiction and write it in the style of combining the the two series, and I'll either read that for you or my hope actually is to get some people involved that are interested in narrating my little pieces. So there's there's that and it's I'm really looking forward to that it's going to be super exciting but anyway I'm going to play the trailer for you here uh many of you may have already heard it but you know I'm going to play it and I hope you like it night has fallen upon the great estate and yet the occupants within lie restless plagued with their own dark secrets and longing for a paradise beyond their reach is this collinwood in the year 1897 or is it Jardin in 1969 join me as i explore the beginnings of two very distinct gothic soap operas one with a well-known fan base, while the other has nearly fallen into obscurity. I bid you welcome to my dark p-
paradise. And before we get to the rest of the episode, I would like to promote the newest project I'm in. It's called The Topaz Flower, and it is a crime mystery old-time radio episode, and it's going to be produced by Cerebral Cinema. You can hear it on September 10th, 8 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. You'll get to hear me alongside Kim Titus, Trevor Rines, Larry Groby, Angela Young, Ken Rainey, Bethany Baldwin, Paul Arbisi, and Stephanie Johnson. Tickets for that are on sale, and I will include links about all of that in the show notes. Hello, fiends! <laughs> This is Cadavra, Cadavra Quivery. I'm the host of an all-new horror series named after the place where I live, The Cellar. (laughs) In each episode, I open my great big book and select a story that's certain to chill you. (laughs) So watch for The Cellar, coming soon from the creator of Pulpery Theater. Pete Lutz. In the meantime, don't take candy from stranglers. <laughs> Launching in March on the all new Mutual Audio Network.com. I'd like to introduce my guest, Jason Markiewicz, who has his own audio drama company, Markiewicz Audio Works, that produces stories of Edgar Allan Poe. From Markiewicz Audio Works comes a suspenseful tale of murder and redemption. Many years ago, I killed a man. His name was Fortunato. Based on the 1846 short story by Edgar Allan Poe, I am to take my leave for a previous engagement. I have received a pipe of what passes for Amontillado, and, well, I have my doubts. Let us go. Whither? Why to your vaults? (laughs) How long have you had that cough? Oh, it is nothing. Proceed. Herein is the Amontillado. Come now. Release me from these chains and... Stop that infernal racket! You have no idea the pain you have caused me. In pace requiescat. The Cask of Amontillado. Available now. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Jason. Hi, Rachel. And thank you for having me on your program. It's a pleasure to be here. Could you tell us the origin story of Markiewicz Audio Works? Well, Markiewicz Audio Works started as a desire to follow in the footsteps of some of my favorite audio drama production groups like Alien Voices, L.A. Theater Works, Macabre Mansion, and Graphic Audio, where I can tell the stories I love using full cast voice actors, creating my own sound effects whenever possible, and having original music tailored for each production. I wanted it to be theatrical in style, and with a voice of our own. We don't work to copy anyone's style, and we're not trying to sound like old radio shows, though I truly love listening to them. It's my goal to tell classic stories with a unique angle, and give the listeners something I hope they haven't heard before. What inspired you to produce stories by Edgar Allan Poe? Some of my favorite writers have influenced my love of science fiction, mysteries, and thrillers, Along with Jules Verne, H.G. Wells, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Edgar Allan Poe is one of my all-time favorites. I also loved that he wrote so many high-quality short works that were digestible for us to develop and essentially start small. I wrote the script for our first production, The Raven, in 2011, when I was considering entering it into a 10-minute play contest. Then I revised it to add effects and music, Then I revised it again to add dialogue and a few other characterizations. Then I revised it again to modernize some of that dialogue and get it to its final state. We did the Cask of Amontillado next. Then I did Manuscript Found in a Bottle. Then the Telltale Heart, which will be out soon. And we'll wrap up our five-part post-series with The Mask of the Red Death, which will be out later this year. 
I think it's also important to say that we are not trying to simply retell the story in its canonical form. We're not analyzing the text or writing missives on what Poe was thinking. We're taking our own fresh look at the work, developing our own scripts and themes, and while keeping the story intact, telling it our way. The characters are still rich, the scenes are well-crafted, and with the sounds and music, I know we will continue to honor the mastery of Poe's writing. Could you tell us about some of the other projects you've been in apart from your own productions? Oh, that answer goes back to my first theatrical production in Italy in 2002. My, I can't believe it's been 20 years. From playing Andrew Makepeace Lad III in R.A. Gurney's Love Letters, the acting bug was in my system, and I was hooked. I have worked in dozens of independent film and commercial projects, some of which have earned numerous International Film Festival awards, and have continued to act in theater, earning my own Best Actor in a Drama nomination in 2019 from the Ellie Awards in Sacramento, California, for my role as famous detective Hercule Poirot in Agatha Christie's The Mysterious Affair at Styles. However, voice acting has been a recent development for me. I have voiced a poor, tortured soul in one of your productions, a malicious doctor for a Phoenix Fire horror story, and have lent my voice to a movie promo. Additionally, I have narrated 19 audiobooks and audio dramas, of which 18 can be found on Audible now, and have contracts for many more in the queue. I truly love narrating audiobooks and doing voice acting, and once I retire from my day job, I hope this becomes a more full-time career. Do you have other plans to produce works besides Edgar Allan Poe? Yes. In fact, our Poe series concludes with The Mask of the Red Death. Once complete, we will have all five of our productions compiled into a full-length work and will begin our next project, which we still believe will be Treasure Island. I reserve the right to change my mind on that one, though, as we are also exploring possible podcast format children's stories, Western dramas, or crafting something entirely different. The only thing I know for sure is that in the near future, we will be producing a version of A Christmas Carol that I know your listeners will enjoy. Thank you again for this opportunity, Rachel, and I appreciate all you have done to support other voice actors and audio dramatists out there. You do some amazing work, and I'm thankful to be on your program. If your listeners want to learn more about us, they can visit our website at www.markiewitzaudioworks.com or follow us on Facebook at Markiewicz Audio Works, or subscribe to our YouTube channel at Markiewicz Audio Works Presents. From Markiewicz Audio Works comes a tale of one man's perilous journey toward the unknown. It was here, in the year 1833, that I set out on my next great adventure and secured passage aboard a magnificent ship destined for places unknown. Based upon the 1833 short story contest winner by Edgar Allan Poe. After a few minutes, I noticed the changing scene around us. The clouds seemed to frown upon the ship. My fear subsided as I heard the voice of a fellow shipmate. The ship descended at a magnificent rate. I quietly moved about the ghostly ship. A man passed by my hiding place. The crewmen walk about in a meditative state, which I cannot understand. The ship and all in it are imbued with the spirit of old age. The ship is quivering, oh God, and going down. I scaled the steps to the deck and hurled the bottle into the sea. Manuscript found in a bottle. And now, our featured demo artist, Derek Mayer. You're... You're, you're not Adam. You, you can't be. Adam died. Ten years ago. I held him. Held you. In my arms. And the bunny said, Good night, moon. Good night, stars to those who are near and those who are far. After a good story like that, I kind of want to go to bed too. No, no, Gruel wasn't for the commanders. <laughs> I was a mighty warrior, drove away adventurers by the dozens, destinies and fate be damned. <laughs>
I get it. I sound like really stupid for asking and it probably makes me sound like I'm trying to pull a prank on you or something. B but I'm really being honest here. I, I want to get to know the whole goth scene better. You should feel grateful! The last image your families will have of you will be of you as heroes, as kind, loving people. Not like I, whose family died thinking he was a filthy, dirt-poor liar. Murder, mystery, tragedy. Private investigator Frank Dixon solves the dark secrets of a city in turmoil. An easy-going war vet and gumshoe has his life turned upside down when a murder case sets fantastic events into motion. This film noir-inspired audio drama uses immersive audio and supernatural story elements to deliver a genre-bending thrill ride. Listen to the first two seasons, now on Spotify. All right, everyone. Have a seat. Have a seat. Welcome to the Cold Feet of Male Praying Mantis Support Group. From Rising Action Media. Now, would anyone like to start? Excuse me, but I have something I would like to share. An audio comedy by Scott Wilkins. Hello, everyone. I'm Manny. Hi, Hi, Manny. I have developed a technique that if you practice it, you will find love and live to see the next day. What is it then? The one thing that stays a woman's hand from violence. The key to the gift of time. It is... Well, well, well. If it isn't the one and only Manny, miss me, honey? The drama. You've got exes that now have to share. You've messed with the system, Manny. We're going to make you wish I fed you to the bats. The action. <laughs> The Ex's Revenge. Please reconsider. Too late. Say goodbye, Manny. Ah! Bug Out, starring William Nunn and Caroline Sweet. Now available. Listen today. And now, our featured audio drama review. Clap your hands and shake off the morning dew. I'm Amelia, and we're going away with the fairies. Fairies in folklore are one of the most popular topics, but did you realize fairies are also prevalent in modern media? Those old tales influence everything from tweets to movies. If you aren't seeing fairies everywhere, you probably aren't looking. Or you need a stone with a hole in it. Those do help. So join me at Away with the Fairies, a new podcast delving into all things fairy. Follow on Twitter at Podcast Fairies and subscribe now. Come away, oh human child, to the water and the wild, with a fairy hand in hand, for the world's more full of weeping than you can understand. Amelia Childers bids us to clap our hands and shake off the morning dew as she imparts excellent information about one of her favorite topics, and probably yours. Fairies. Now, many of us probably were fans of fairies as children. I know I was a big fan of Mary Martin's Peter Pan, which featured Tinkerbell depicted as a beam of light no bigger than your fist that dotted around the room. In fact, I used to play at Peter Pan and used a flashlight to represent Tink. But I'm getting off topic here. I really enjoyed listening to Amelia's first episode. It was very informative, and I learned a lot of things about fairy mythology that I wasn't familiar with. I also enjoyed a poem that she read toward the end of the episode. Now, Amelia is flying solo with this podcast, but she's doing a remarkable job. She has a full season out, ending with an episode all about the, the Cottingling Fairies, which I look forward to listening to. So if you're a fan of fairies, you should consider checking out her podcast and subscribing. That concludes this episode of Soul Twin Talk. I look forward to speaking with you again next week. Be safe. Be happy, and always remember, I can do anything, I can reach any goal today, I can do what I want, I can be what I want to be. You've been listening to Soul Twin Talk. I'm your host, Rachel Polium, and I'd like to thank my guest, Jason Markiewicz, for being with us here today. Along with those who provided a promo, Pete Lutz for The Cellar, the Neo-Noir podcast, Scott Wilkins' Bug Out, 
The Cask of Amontillado and MS in a Bottle by Marky Woods Audio Works, Away with the Fairies by Amelia Childress, and Derek Mayer for sharing his demo with us. Remember to purchase your ticket for The Topaz Flower. Information will be provided in the show notes. The themes for Soul Twin Audios, Soul Twin Talk, and Dark Paradise were composed and performed by Ross Bernhardt with incidental music by Storyblocks.